Hi, my name is Andy McDonald. I live in Franklin County near Frankfort, Kentucky, and today I'm going to talk to you about solar energy. I'm here at my house, and this here is the solar electric system that supplies the electricity for our home. Um, here uh, at our house, we get um, about 100% of the annual electricity that we need from this solar array. Um, you can see my house in the background, and uh, my wife and I started renovating our house about 10 years ago when we bought our farm here. And we designed the house, uh, we designed the renovation to make it a very energy efficient passive solar home. And so it was designed to use a minimum of energy, and we wanted to be able to supply all of our electricity needs with solar energy. And so our house is heated with a wood stove and um, we do not have air conditioning, so that helps keep our um, electricity usage low. Um, we also have a solar hot water system, which um, I can show you later in the program. And um, so when we uh, first moved into the house, the five solar panels here behind me supplied uh, all of the electricity that we need for our annual usage. And um, as years went by and um, we settled into the house, um, our electricity usage went up a little bit and we decided to expand the array. So what started off with five panels is now nine solar panels. Um, and then in 2018, uh, we purchased a used electric car, uh, a Nissan Leaf, and that increased our electricity usage a little bit further. And so um, we have plans to add some additional solar panels uh, onto the barn um, to, to bring us back to uh, net zero energy for the whole home, including our car. Um, but without the car, we're still um, uh, beyond net zero electricity. Um, so the cost of solar panels has fallen dramatically over the past um, 10 years um, to the point where now uh, solar, elect solar electric systems are an excellent investment for most homeowners. Um, when, when factored over the life of the system, which would be uh, at least 25 years, the cost of the energy from the solar photovoltaics is around six to eight cents per kilowatt hour. Um, that compares to the average electric rate in Kentucky, which is around uh, 10 cents per kilowatt hour. So if you have the um, ability to make an investment in a solar electric system, it's a very good long-term investment. Um, it provides you with stable electricity rates uh, for decades to come. Um, a lot of people who are putting in uh, solar electric systems are um, retired people or people approaching retirement who want to uh, stabilize their uh, utility bills. Um, they anticipate having a, a more limited fixed income in retirement. And so being able to uh, stabilize your utility bills and um, protect yourself from rate increases is a good investment when you're, uh, when you're getting older. Um, but it's not just for older people. A lot of younger people are using solar energy too. Um, so I'll talk some about the uh, basic components of a solar electric system. Um, so the primary component is the solar panel. Um, there are various solar energy technologies. Um, solar photovoltaics is what we're talking about here. These panels uh, convert the, the energy that comes from the sun, the sunlight, into electricity. And, and then that electricity um, is fed into our home via our electric meter, and then we can use it for whatever, uh, for whatever we need electricity for. Um, the solar panels have uh, crystalline cells behind a tempered glass covering, which make the conversion of sunlight into electricity. Um, the other primary component is the inverter. The inverter is the device that uh, accepts the direct current electricity from the solar panels and converts it into 
uh, either 120 or 240 volt alternating current and matches that current to the parameters that the utility grid re requires and enables us to interconnect the solar array to the power grid via the meter on your house. The system that I have here is a grid intertied net metering system so that my house is still connected to the utility grid. And so uh, when it's sunny, if I need electricity, um, I use the power that's coming off the solar panels. But if it's a cloudy day or if it's nighttime, I use electricity from the power grid. And the two systems work together seamlessly. Well, you might ask, well, what happens if it's sunny and I don't need all the electricity that I'm using? Well, the solar system produces an excess of electricity in that case. And the excess electricity flows through the meter back to the utility. And, it, well, it flows on the power lines actually back to the next customer down the line who needs power. So, in fact, uh, like right now, it's a bright, sunny day. Not much is going on in my house. Uh, I'm probably feeding electricity into the grid at this moment and supplying my neighbor's house. Um, and then it, the way net metering works, that's a, like a policy rule that the utility has in which I get credited for each kilowatt hour that I supply to the utility. And then at nighttime, when I use power from the utility, I recover those credits. And, and at the end of the month, my electric bill reflects the balance between the, the net balance between the amount that I produced and the amount that I consumed. So in the summertime, I usually produce more power than I need, and so I build up credits. In the wintertime, this, because the sun is lower in the sky and the days are shorter and it's more often cloudy, the solar panels don't produce as much electricity in the wintertime. So I often require extra power from the utility grid in the winter. And usually the credits I built up in the summer offset the power I need in the winter. And that illustrates uh, a basic design principle when you're sizing a solar electric system for a home. Uh, you would optimally want to design the system to supply all the electricity you would need on an annual basis. And in most cases, the system will be oversized for the, uh, for the summer. So you produce more power than you need in the summer and you make it up in the winter time. And it, the end result is that you would have a zero energy charge annually. So my um, energy bill uh, for the past nine years since I installed this has typically been about 10 to $15 a month, which is the minimum uh, service charge for my utility. Um, as I mentioned, after we got the electric car, our electric usage did increase. And so over the past um, two years, we have paid a little bit more for the extra usage for the car. So our typical bill nowadays is between 20 and $30 a month, including the car. Um, so net metering is a great system that enables homeowners to recover their investment in their solar array um, and it values the electricity that you generate at the same rate as the electricity you buy from the utility. If you're watching this in Frankfurt or Franklin County, um, there are uh, several utilities that serve Frankfurt and Franklin County. Um, here out in the country where I live, in the county, we're served by Kentucky Utilities. Uh, if, if you live in downtown Frankfurt and other parts of Franklin County, you might be served by the Frankfurt Plant Board. Um, other people might be served by Bluegrass Energy. Um, the Frankfurt Plant Board is a municipal utility, and they do offer net metering, as does Kentucky Utilities and Bluegrass Energy. However, in 2019, the state of Kentucky passed a law which allows the utilities to change their net metering rules. And the changes have not gone into effect yet, but they will affect Kentucky Utilities and Bluegrass Energy and the other electric co-ops and Louisville Gas and Electric. 
but the rules do not, that law does not affect the Frankfurt Plant Board or other municipal utilities because they're not regulated by the state public service commission. So if you live in, um, or if you are served by Kentucky Utilities or one of the electric co-ops, at some point in the near future, your ability to use net metering at the retail rate is likely uh, or, or possible to change. So you may want to investigate investing in solar before that change happens. Um, that the timing of that change will depend on when each utility brings a rate case before the Public Service Commission. And presently, um, I would say there's at least six months um, before any changes might occur to Kentucky Utilities or the co-op's electric rates, because none of them have filed rate cases with the Public Service Commission so far. We would typically design a system to meet 100% of your annual electricity cost or annual electricity needs. And so the size of the array is dependent on your electricity usage. And so at our home, uh, not counting our electric car, we use about 10% as much electricity as the average home in Kentucky. Therefore, our solar array um, is about 10% of the size of what you would need for a typical home. Um, so we have about uh, one to two kilowatts here at our home. Um, and the average home in Kentucky would probably need eight to 10 kilowatts. Um, and then, um, but the average home uh, tends to be less efficient than it could be. And so I always encourage people who are interested in solar energy to explore what you can do to make your home more energy efficient and to conserve energy. Uh, there are many strategies you can use to reduce your energy consumption. Uh, the Frankfurt Plant Board offers free home energy audits. And so if you visit, visit their website, um, you'll find the phone number where you can call and in, ask to have a home energy audit. And then a um, energy efficiency specialist would come out to your house and give you recommendations for how much insulation you might be able to add to your home, um, what you might be able to do to uh, increase, um, to weatherize the home, stop air leakage. Um, you'll look at your furnace or your heating and cooling system, be able to recommend um, how you could make that more energy efficient. Um, they'll recommend, um, if you haven't converted to LED lighting, um, that's a very cost-effective way to improve your energy efficiency. Um, if you have an old refrigerator, um, there are very energy efficient refrigerators on the market now. Um, so those are all things you can do to reduce your energy usage and your energy costs. And it's generally much more cost effective to conserve energy than to buy more solar panels. So I encourage you to pursue conservation and energy efficiency before you invest in solar panels. But once you're ready to invest, um, you'll uh, probably want to call a solar installer and uh, or multiple solar installers and get quotes from several companies, uh, find out what size system they recommend for you. And um, if you there is a list of solar installers working in Kentucky at the website for the Kentucky Solar Energy Society, which is uh, www.kyses.org. Once again, that's www.kyses.org. And in the resources tab, you can find a list of solar installers. Uh, there are installers in uh, Lexington, Danville, Louisville, Cincinnati, um, and other parts of the state. Um, I work uh, for a program called Apogee Climate and Energy Transitions, uh, I provide uh, consulting and technical assistance for solar energy and energy efficiency projects. I also do educational advocacy and research work to um, advance the energy transition and solutions to the climate crisis. Um, I've done a lot of work with solar energy over the years, and Apogee is a program of Earth Tools Incorporated, which is a business located in Owen County, Kentucky, and... Um, we have installed 
Uh, for several years, we installed solar energy systems in the Franklin County, Owen County area. Uh, but nowadays, we're focusing more on uh, providing technical assistance and uh, consulting. Um, so thank you very much for your attention. Um, I think we'll take a break and walk over and take a look at my inverter. This here is the inverter that uh, operates with my solar electric system. As I said earlier, the inverter converts the DC uh, direct current electricity that comes from the solar panels into alternating current, and it converts it into either 120 volts or 240 volts uh, AC current, and allows the power from the solar array to interconnect with the utility grid via the meter. Um, <clears throat> the, um, this inverter is, I believe, nine years old now. Um, there are many uh, different brands or manufacturers of inverters nowadays, um, and they come in different sizes. Um, in, in recent years, uh, there's be the micro-inverters have become more prevalent. A micro-inverter uh, actually is a, a small device about this size that mounts on each solar panel. So rather than having a central string inverter like this, that serves the entire solar array, there would be one microinverter on each solar panel. And the advantage of having microinverters is that you can monitor the power output on, on each solar panel individually, which is pretty neat uh, because nowadays just about every inverter enables you to monitor the power output of your solar array online via using computer software. And so you can see at in real time what your uh, how your solar array is performing and you can also see the historical performance and that data is provided numerically and with graphs so you can visually see how the solar array is performing uh, string inverters provide monitoring and micro inverters provide monitoring you do, you do need to have a, a good internet connection at the site where the solar array is located to have that online monitoring. The uh, practical advantage of monitoring is that if you ever have a problem with your solar array, like um, if damage ever occurs to a solar panel or a group of panels, or if one panel just develops a fault for some reason, the monitoring uh, software will alert you to the problem so that you can get it fixed uh, and get your system operating at 100% sooner rather than later. Um, and um, the advantage of the microinverter is that if there's a fault with one solar panel, the microinverter allows you to identify exactly where the problem is, which makes troubleshooting and repair much easier. With a string inverter, if the monitoring shows you there's a problem with the array, it's a is a more involved process to identify where in the array the problem is located. Now, my inverter is old enough that uh, it did not have the monitoring feature, um, so I don't have that capacity. But uh, to my knowledge, most or all inverters installed nowadays have a monitoring capability. Um, I should say um, a few words about equipment uh, durability and warranties. So. Nowadays, inverters uh, typically have a 10 to 12 year standard warranty. Um, some inverters have an even longer warranty. And many of them will offer an a warranty extension option that you can purchase that will extend the warranty out to 20 years or perhaps even more. These solar photovoltaic panels typically have a 25 year power production warranty, which guarantees that in, at 25 years, they'll be putting out 80 to 85 percent of their rated power output. So the solar modules are designed to be very durable, very weather resistant, and to withstand the extremes of weather that we that we have in the world. They're used all over the world in every climate you can imagine. They're also used in outer space. Um, so the Investment in a solar array is a very secure long-term investment. It's also a tax-free investment. You can compare the long-term 
financial value of a solar array to what you would gain by investing your money in, in other uh, types of investments, whether that would be in a CD or putting it in the bank or putting it in the stock market. And in the case of a, a solar array, the value of the investment increases as electricity rates rise. And it's a very secure investment because electricity rates have been rising consistently for decades and are likely to continue doing so. So this here is the solar hot water system that provides hot water for our home. The solar, this is a solar thermal collector. So it differs from the solar photovoltaic panels we were looking at earlier. The solar thermal collector, the large collector here, um, has copper tubing inside and circulates um, propylene glycol, which is a non-toxic antifreeze. And the glycol circulates through the thermal collector and gets hot. And then through uh, copper tubing goes into the house where I have a heat exchanger by my water heater. The heat exchanger transfers the heat from the propylene glycol to the water in my hot water storage tank. And in that way provides hot water for my home. Um, the solar hot water system uh, saves us probably uh, 250 to $300 a year or more in water heating costs and uh, reduces our electricity usage by about 2,500 to 3,000 kilowatt hours per year. Um, you'll see here um, the there are two small solar PV panels um, attached to the solar thermal collector. These small PV modules operate two pumps, one panel for each pump. Uh, one panel circulates water through the heat exchanger, and the other panel circulates the propylene glycol through the heat exchanger. And they not only power the pump, but they're the control for the pump. So when the sun comes up in the morning, the solar photovoltaic panel starts producing electricity. And when the sun's low in the sky in the morning, it's not producing a whole lot of electricity, so the pump turns kind of slow, which is fine because it's not producing much heat either in the thermal collector. But as the thermal collector heats up, as the sun gets higher, the photovoltaic panel puts out more electricity and the pump spins faster. And then in the evening, as the sun goes down, the uh, pumps slow down and eventually stop, and the thermal panel cools off and goes to sleep for the night. And so the system works very, very smoothly and does a really good job on sunny days, or partly sunny days. When it's cloudy, it doesn't produce very much hot water, especially in the wintertime. And so we do have a backup element on our w water heater. So our water storage tank is a 50 gallon water heater that's a highly insulated water heater and it has an electric element in it with a thermostat and if the solar thermal heater uh, does not maintain the water in the tank to the temperature we want uh, the electric element in the water heater turns on and boosts the temperature in the tank to the temperature we need the uh, in most you you can either keep the um, electric element switched on all the time, and it will only operate when the solar is not providing. In our case, we keep the electric element switched off uh, to maximize our energy savings, and we only we turn on the switch to use the electric backup as needed when it's cloudy. So um, the system's worked very well. It's, it's been in place for about five years now, and we've been very happy with it. So that concludes my presentation. Thank you for your attention. Um, once again, you can, um, you can learn more about my work by visiting our website at apogeeclimate.org. Um, or, and you can email me at my email address is andy at apogeeclimate.org. Thank you very much.
Now you will find a little talk with Jesus makes it right. All right. All right. I once was lost in sin, sin, but Jesus took me in. And then a little light from heaven filled my soul. It bathed my heart in love and wrote my name above, above. And just a little talk with Jesus made me whole. Have a little talk with Jesus, let us tell him all about our troubles. He will hear our faintest cry, he will answer by and by. Now when you feel a little prayer will turn in, and you know a little fire is burning, you will find a little talk with Jesus makes it right, all right. I may have doubts and fears, and fears my eyes be filled with tears, but Jesus is a friend who watches day and night. I go to him in prayer, he knows my every care, and just a little talk with Jesus makes it right, right, right. Now let us have a little talk with Jesus, let us tell him all about our troubles, he will hear our faintest cry, and he will answer by and by. Now when you feel a little prayer will turning, and you know a little fire is burning, you will find a little talk with Jesus makes it right, all right. Now let us have a little talk, a little talk with Jesus. Tell him all about, all about our troubles Hear our faintest cry And he will answer by and by Now when you feel a little prayer, a little prayer will turn in Know a little fire, a little fire is burning Find a little talk with Jesus Find a little talk with Jesus You will find a little talk with Jesus Makes it Have a little talk with Jesus Find a little talk with Jesus.